plums like to grow in what we call an open vase shape. Okay, so we like to have the middle open so we get a lot of sunlight and get a lot of airflow in there. And so what I'm going to do now is, although we've got some buds that are opening here, when this grows, it's going to grow towards the inside, which I don't really want. Okay, and of course I have cleaned my pruning tools because I was helping somebody else prune and I don't want to transmit any diseases to you, to your plants. So what we're looking at here too is plants have what's called auxin. It's a hormone that, that usually concentrates towards the outside of a branch. And what it does, it'll make these, it'll make the, the last bud it gets to, it'll make that a main branch. So because this was pruned here, this bud will take on that dominance. And so that bud will probably grow this way toward the interior of the tree, which I don't want. So one thing I'm gonna do here is prune to a bud that will take over and go a little bit more toward the outside, okay? So what I've done, I've pruned, and now this bud will hopefully, on the outside, will take over and give us a little bit more horizontal growth, okay? So that's all we're gonna do on that one. With this one, I could cut this off, but, um, Probably what I'll do, I, I like that it's already budding out because I, I want to, I need to balance keeping buds and, and keeping leaves on there. So probably, you know, most of this side's dead right here. I'm going to take most of that off. But we still got live tissue there. This, most of that may be gone too. So what we'll do is just let that be. And I'm going to take stuff that's off the bottom here because this is not really going to help us. Basically, what we're going to be doing this year is growing good branches from here. So we'll come back next year and we'll pick, you know, you'll have a lot of growth off this. But we'll, next year, what we're going to do is take off all the branches on the inside, pick probably four, three or four main branches. And then when we prune there, then that'll get you really set up for the next year. Okay, so this is all we're going to do. So we balanced, you know, positioning some of the branches with keeping some of the buds that we know we're already going to have and give us leaves because we don't want to have nothing here. We want to, really this year we're focused on building a root system. Okay, so that's probably all I'd do to that one. All right, our base here, make sure we don't have too much soil. And there's a little bit too much piled up there. But what I'm doing is... Uh, going down until I feel sort of a the first what they call lateral root so we had a little bit too much soil piled up there which is okay for the first year but we don't want it successive years so all I'm doing is just clearing out some of the soil bam right there we're good okay plums what we're really looking at is a good open vase shape so first thing I'm looking for is things that I don't think are really alive I don't think that it's really alive okay so we've got three good scaffold branches right here. We got one, two, and three. And so what I'm going to do, just to encourage this to, this one to grow a little bit stouter, is I'm gonna prune just above where I've got a bud that will grow outward horizontally. Okay, I've got some material here that looks a little bit dead, so I'm nipping that off. We come to this branch over here and this one's just kind of growing straight up it'll grow toward the interior so i don't like it i've got a bud that's coming out there so i'm going to snip right above that direct the growth outward and this bud here is trying to take over as it's trying to take over as the dominant branch of the tree which we don't really like when we're trying to grow small tree although it looks good and you got branches i'm actually going to take that off Okay, so we don't like that, and this one too, although it's giving us some, some buds and leaves, I'm actually going to take that off, just to redirect the growth to more of th this part of the tree, and that will become a problem in the future too. So this is all I'm going to do to this one. I'm going to feel around the soil again, just to make sure it's not piled up too much. This one's not too bad. Just taking it a few inches away from the soil and that will help this thrive. You can see, if I get out of the sun, where the soil was piled up a little high on the 
the bark there on the, on the stem on the trunk and if we were to keep that there too high what happens is that soil of course hold, holds moisture it will hold moisture against the trunk and the tree will actually sense that and it will uh, it will actually grow what's called adventitious roots it'll actually start to grow a new root system up above its regular root system which is bad because oftentimes they'll do that for a few years they will actually abort the lower root system and that new root system up above it's not going to be as strong if it gets dry and hot the tree will just die so that just prevents that it's just good to do when you have a nice young tree so that's all we're going to do on this one we'll take a look and see what we have again number one we'll clear make sure the root root zone or that lower bark area isn't too isn't too crowded with soil so that looks pretty good okay so right here, we've got two of these branches trying to become a central leader. And we kind of just want to pick out, it's important when trees are young and they want to grow in a central leader type form. What will happen is if both of these are allowed to stay, both of these will try to become the main branch. And in the area where they're connected, you'll get, uh, you'll get very weak attachment, okay? So I like, what I like to do is just pick one and nip the other off. So I've selected my central leader and just to encourage a little bit more uh, thicker branching along the trunk, I'm going to just nip the top of that. And I'm also going to nip this one because it looks like it may want to be a central leader too. So from here, we'll probably have a central leader and we'll probably have a few branches on the side that we'll establish as what we call scaffold branches. And the rest I'm going to just kind of clip off because we'll probably start to establish our scaffold branches around here. And next year, we'll come in and thin it out, take a few out and pick our favorite. So I'm just leaving a few of the branches, and that's all we'll do on that one. On this persimmon, are both trying to become the central leader. I'm just going to pick the one that's a little more straight and keep it, take the other one off. And I'm going to... Just nip the top a little bit, right above a bud. That will take over as the central leader, and it just helps to um, it just helps to direct the growth a little bit better. And I'll nip down some of these outer buds just to encourage a little bit more bushy growth. And then come down to the bottom, make sure our soil's cleaned off. That looks pretty good. Um, here's the graft union. This is where this the top part was grafted to a different root stock And we do that that's done a lot in the, the fruit tree world Because oftentimes the you know, this is a another type of persimmon on a root stock, but we found that the the plants we use for the root stock are uh, Better for several things usually they impart disease resistance they impart usually a different growth habit. So oftentimes we're using root stocks that will keep this tree from getting its full height, which we want to keep them smaller. Um, and they often just take the soils better than maybe this actual variety would. So that's why we use root stocks. Uh, they're very good. They're, they're very, very common in the fruit tree world. So um, we definitely want to make sure that we don't let uh, shoots and buds grow up from the root stock because that will be, uh, it will be a persimmon, but it will be a different, variety. A, a different variety and won't taste very good. Usually the ones that we come from the rootstocks just don't taste great. So okay. that's, why, that's what we need to look out for on that one. Got it. So this one just looks like a, a one-year-old grafted persimmon. We're not going to do much to it. We're just going to make sure, we're just going to kind of pick a point where, where we're going to direct the growth. So that'll take over the central leader. We'll get a few nice scaffold branches off of that. And that's all we're going to do to this one. This doesn't look like it's planted too deeply. And it looks pretty good. We have a chestnut. Um, you know, normally these aren't pruned as heavily as some of the other fruiting trees. But what we are going to do, the main thing, we're going to establish our central leader, which will be this one here. And just to direct the growth, maybe a little more upright, I'm going to prune above a bud that way. And to establish that these are the central leader, if I were to leave these up, these would probably take over as, as some of the main, the main upright branch. So what I'm going to do to stop that is like we did on some of the other ones, I'm going to prune to a, a bud that will, will reach more toward the outside. Okay. 
So if I were to prune to this bud here, what's gonna happen is this branch will probably take over and grow toward the inside. I don't want that. I'm, I'm looking for something that I can prune to. That will take over as the main branch and it'll go out that. Same thing here. Look for an outward facing bud to take over as a main branch. So we've kind of cleared that up there on the top. So other things I'm looking for, um, right here we've got branches that this one's sort of twisted over this other one. So I'm probably gonna take that one off. And then again, I'm sort of directing growth. Uh-oh, I'm blocking somebody over there. Sort of directing growth this way. Okay, I that. Little twisty branches off. I'm just making little cuts just to make sure we get good growth off. I'm not gonna do too much. I'm just gonna try to direct some of the growth out away from the tree. Make sure nothing's growing back in. And just taking off little stragglers here and there. So other than some dead wood there, and of course we'll look at the bottom. This one looks good. That's naked. Yeah, not too much to not too much to take off there, so that looks really good. Open up the bottom of the root system. All right, that's all we'll do for that one. Chestnut. So again, one of the main things we're doing is just try to direct some of the growth away from the tree. Do you think this one is bad already? Uh, no, it's just got some damage here and there. Um, it's just keeping on some leaves. Because when I make a cut, there's still green tissue in there. So. Uh -huh. okay. All right, so what we need to do is sort of figure out which branches we want to keep. And we'll keep some, but I'll direct some of the growth out away from the tree. Stuff like this is trying to grow up. I'm just going to nip off stuff that's growing toward too far towards the top. Just separate these branches a little bit. Uh, here. Again, just a little nip here and there just to make it a little more bushy. So that's probably all I'm going to do for this one. Just open up the center a little bit. That one, see if this branch were allowed to grow, it'll probably grow here. Right. So I don't really like that one. That's probably all, all, all I will do there. Actually, you're cutting the top is to encourage it to grow. Yeah, yeah, it's actually encouraging. So you're stopping it from growing as much this way, right. but this bud will take over. But what that actually does is it gives more more energy and actually more of that hormone, the growth hormone that's naturally within the tree will sort of redistribute throughout the entire plant. So less of it's going here, more of it will go to these other branches. So you will get more, hopefully more bushy outward growth. So that's why we're kind of clipping the, the ends of everything. Then I'm gonna come down here, and I'll make sure we're not, don't have soil piled up too high, which we don't, that looks really good. And done with that one future years but this is great in that we've got scaffold branches so how the apples like to grow they like to grow with one central leader and then we like to pick what we call scaffold branches usually going out in a radius around the tree so this is looking really good the one thing we have to address though is here up top we've got what looks like three branches trying to be the central leader so we have to just make a decision on which one we want to keep and from the looks of it, and there, some of this is really just uh, just our opinions, okay, and just what we think works. But uh, so we're gonna take two of these off, okay. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna take this one off because it's trying to be a central leader. And if you wanted to, you could take some it. of this and try to try to grow some of these okay. as, as other trees. So, and then we'll probably reposition this. I'm actually going to take this branch off as well. Um, well. Actually, this kind of has a weird knot on it. So I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take this off. Just because I didn't really like the, the way that knot looked. It may be a weak spot. So I picked the other one, which is fine. But again, if you wanted to uh, try to root some of this, you could use it. Cool. New tree material. All right, so here's our new central leader. Okay. So to encourage one, uh, we want to try to start 
uh, encouraging it to grow bushier. Because again, if we, if we nip the tips of this, more energy will go and more uh, auxin hormone will go towards the other branches. So really what I'm trying to do here, I'm gonna nip it back just a little bit, just to a, a, another bud. So I'll nip it right there. Keep this material. Okay, so this is our central leader where it needs to be. So then what we do is come down to our scaffold branches and you've got some nice ones here. I'm actually probably gonna take this one off because it's got a little bit of weird growth. So this is sort of the ideal. We've got four scaffold branches growing radially from the, you know, meaning growing around the, the stem. And what I'm gonna do is come and prune these to a point because I don't want this to take over and get too big. What I wanna do is start directing outward growth. So I'm gonna come down and prune this to a bud where I think it's gonna take over and move to the outside. So I'm gonna prune that that way, just right above there. And come do the same over here. Look for a, a nice bud that's maybe growing outward. Prune right above that. And why do I pick one over the other? It's really just intuition, instinct, and just having done this before. There's, there's no reason really to pick this one over this one. It's just which one kind of almost feels better in the moment. So I just like how that one's growing that way. So this okay. is sort of the final prune. And then we'll check the, the base to make sure the soil's not piled up too high. It's just had a little bit of soil on it. So we'll move that back just a few inches. And there you go, a nice, nicely pruned apple tree. So this will be set up for good growth. Usually these, these support sticks are really just for the first year. Hopefully this, this will stand up on its own. And what happens is the, if these straps stay on too long, they can actually damage the trunk. So on this one, it doesn't have, you know, quite the structure that other apple tree did, but that's fine. Yeah, it's from another uh, nursery. Yeah. Different company. So really what I'll start to do is I'm gonna take this, both of those would try to compete as a central leader. So I'm gonna take that off. And I'm actually gonna take a little more off. And really what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to leave some of these buds that will eventually come out but um let's see i am actually gonna take that off we'll make this the new central leader and then this year we'll grow some some scaffold branches off of that so i wouldn't do much more than that to this one and we'll see how it goes this is still relatively young just sort of a coming into a second year i believe but it should be should have some nice nice growth this year cool. frost Leave it alone. And the root is okay here? Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. The root's fine. So, with the peaches, we're going back to that open vase shape, okay? So we like to try to direct growth outward, have a nice open center, and so we've got to make some cuts, because this one is trying to grow straight up, which is not really going to work for our, our, uh, our growth purposes here. So what I'm going to do is make a small cut to this main part of the stem and what i'm trying to do is see if i can get some of this growth to go this way and open up a little more you don't want the main truck on this one right yeah so what we'll probably do is this area will probably stay uh -huh. the Leave same it open. level every oh. year oh. we'll prune everything back and keep this area okay. area level and tight because most of the peach trees you see at least in commercial production it's better if they're they sort of start at this level and they don't get much higher than this. Got it. Okay. So again, thinking of terms of outward growth, I'm gonna try to select branches that, or try to cut to buds that are going out. sort of growing outward. Yeah, so I may cut that one there. I'll leave this one on for this year. I'll direct growth outward there. This branch is sort of going towards the middle, so I don't like it, I nip it. I've got two growing here and I'm trying to pick some a little little better angle. That would 
seem kind of dead. And again, I'll pick branches that are sort of moving at an angle. Do I need to do anything for the cut? No, mm -mm. no, should okay. be fine. They'll sort of heal that over. And in fact, you know, where these are now, they'll actually probably start pushing some sap out. Oh, okay. I wouldn't really. You're, you're... And we want to do it in the sunny day, not the rainy day. Yeah, uh, it's best to prune when you when you don't get rain right after, okay. because you can get a little more you can get a little more disease pressure. You get more diseases come in okay. if it's going to rain right after. You typically don't have too much problem with that if we're doing it on a relatively dry day. Okay, and then. You know, we could let this one grow, but I just, I don't like it. I'm gonna try to put a little more of our effort into these branches here. Okay. You know, if this one grows out, it's gonna get shaded out by this one anyway. So we'll just take that one off. All right. And of course we'll check the root system here. Take a little bit of that soil away. It's just piled up just a little too high, but you should always check your, the base of your tree at least the year after you've planted it because they can sink especially in the clay soils here in north georgia they just tend to sink after you plant so sometimes you have to do this open them up but that should be good once we do that for the rest of its life as long as we don't pile too much soil up. got it so again we're thinking open vase shape concept okay so we're really looking anything that's sort of growing towards the middle like this we want to take out and just to encourage some growth going outward just gonna lop that right there and then I may just nip the tip off encourage a little bit more bushy growth same thing here outward branches we're probably gonna establish this area as our as the center of our open vase so I'm just gonna come down and select some branches that are growing a little more outward uh, am I going to see a lot of flowers yeah, you should see some. Now, of course, we're taking off a lot of the flowering potential when we're pruning. So we're taking off a lot of that, but these will flower very soon, and you will see a good bit. But yes. in order to control the growth, yes, we have to, we do mess up your flower show a little bit, <laughs> but that's okay. For this year. For this year. Mm -hmm. I'll just do that. We'll call that, we'll call that pruned. The only other thing we could do, and now that I'm looking at this, this has sort of grown a little too much, uh -huh. okay? And this is almost trying to take over the central leader, which we don't like. What might actually be better is if we make a cut right here, okay? And this is going to open up this area a little bit more, whereas this has just grown up too much. Because okay. again, year after year, this will probably be the highest, the center of the tree we let it get. Oh, I see. And all the branches will come from here. Okay. And we'll have four main ones. We'll prune back to the same spot every year. So just because that was getting a little high, I took that off. Okay. Okay. It's gonna be my new tree potential. Exactly. Oh, so that's the, that the base. Yeah, so we'll look at the base. It doesn't look too bad. Just a little bit piled up around it. Move it out. And there you go. Right. We've got what looks like this is trying to be a central leader. So I'm actually going to take these two out and establish one, two, three as your center scaffold branches. I'll even cut that down a little more just to establish some outward growth. I'm just nipping some of the, the tips off. Just encourage better sideways growth and that's all we'll do to that one again we've got this part here this is probably where we this is probably the taller the center of this tree we'll ever get everything else we're going to try to okay grow out from there so. and this tree is not straight up kind of leaning yeah it's one not direction. and so it's not big deal it's not a huge deal no so um for trees that are growing like that you know, it's more of a mental thing for us. It's okay. Yes, it could be here. So right. you could, if you wanted to, direct the growth straight up. You could tie off. Uh -huh. um, like the way yeah, the other could, one did. Yeah, you could stake it and just run a line here just to keep it here if you want it straight. Now, there's nothing saying, even if it grows like this, the branches will sort of uh, always straighten out. Okay. The trunk will probably always have a little lean if you don't correct that this year. Uh -huh. um, it's probably not going to affect the fruiting at all. Oh, so okay. If you want it straight, like for the said, look. Yeah, you could always tie a little guy wire, stake it to the ground, and it'll grow a little bit more this way. Okay. 
but for the nutrition whatever wise fruit wise it's gonna no. stay same no shouldn't be much of a problem okay shouldn't be an issue cool. so we've you know removed some of the some of that soil that was piled up there again in our clay we move that and this tree should be good to go for this year cool thank you and i'm not sure how well these are going to do but if you wanted to you could actually um, try to root some of these and usually you try to root that one-year-old growth um, and, I, and you don't have to do it in water. I would actually maybe do it in soil. Just put them in the ground? Yeah, you can put them in the ground and they make rooting hormone. That's a, that's a little white powder. Do I powder. need to use some, uh, uh, some uh, alcohol to encourage the roots? Box store, Home Depot or something like that or online. Yeah. And basically you can just dip it in that. It actually okay. encourages roots. So what you can do is just take a, a small blade too because they will actually root where you have buds here. Okay. Let me grab a knife. You can actually take and sort of scrape the buds off and put some of that rooting powder. And, and you could probably do this and not put the rooting powder. But if you put that in soil, oftentimes you'll get roots to grow off. So you can just knock that in the soil. I would do it maybe in potting soil closer to the house just because you're more likely to water it and keep it protected there. Okay. okay. And the water is the same way as this tree. Yeah. Just just keep the keep, keep that soil wet and you know you may get roots to form here and in that case you'd have a new a new tree. Oh. That's okay. the exact same, you know, it's basically a clone of this. It's basically the exact same fruit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not terribly uh, I hadn't seen a lot of people do that on the plums, but certainly other other things you can. So I would definitely try it. You know, again, that would be Get some of the rooting hormone if you want to, and you just set it in the soil like that, or set it in your potting soil, and then hopefully you're gonna get some of those to bud. Now this may be a little late. Normally we like, we like to do that when it's a little more dormant, but you can certainly try, see if they'll take, you know, with, your, with your cuttings here. You're not doing anything else with them, so you may as well give it a shot. Thank you. Um, and, and, and so until you get that, until you want to plant those, what I would do with those cuttings uh -huh. is cut them in maybe eight to 10 inch sections, uh, wrap them up in just a moist paper towel. Okay. Put them, you know, make sure you label what, what they are. What is you know, it, yeah. Not, but you could put it in a Ziploc baggie and put it in the refrigerator. Oh, before I uh, really yeah, it just them. it just helps them store until you're ready to do the, okay. the Got rooting it. hormone. Okay. You know? If you're going to be doing that today or tomorrow, you you don't need to do that as much. But if you're going to, it's going to be a week until you do it. You Got need it. To, Need. So normally, a lot of those sprays we're using really to protect the fruit. Okay. You're not going to get a lot of fruit on these. No, not this so, year. Um, the only thing you, you might want to do preventatively is there's a, a fungicide called Captan. And you, know, you mix it up in a one or two gallon sprayer. And you can just spray it on the trunks and spray it on the leaves. It just okay. kind of protects from, from most of the, the fungal diseases we okay. have. So you could do that this year just to ensure that your leaves are... All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.